Welcome to A Woman's Work, where you'll find ways to go from surviving to thriving while balancing the demands of womanhood in today's society. Hey guys, it's your host, Samara James, coming back to you once again never giving up on this show because of all your wonderful feedback and i'm here to share with you from my heart to yours i am finally back in my house after harvey 10 months of apartment living dealing with general contractors that part is still not over and we are back and so now that i'm back in my house i just like i promised am going to um, get back on the schedule as far as releasing an episode every single week and Over these last 10 months, I have not forgotten about those of you who are faithful listeners. I have been coming up with different topics that I just can't wait to share with you guys. There's so much content that I have built up to give you. And I'm still always loving the feedback that I get from you guys. So if you have specific things that you want to hear about, please, please, please let me know. So today's topic is going to be taking risks in relationships. So about a year ago, um, I created a vision board and one of my biggest intentions on that board was to build more relationships with women. And that has manifested. I've built so many beautiful friendships with so many beautiful women who I'm spending a lot of time with. And our topics of discussion are typically one, our children, two, our relationships, or three, our money. And usually all three of those things we end up tying back into our relationships, whether that's with our significant others, our husbands, um, our friends, but everything for us goes back to relationships. And um, especially when it comes to male-female relationships these days, everybody is so guarded. It seems to me like when I'm having intimate conversations with people, men and women, um, there's this deep desire to have authentic connections with other people. Like everybody wants that. Everybody is talking about how they want that, but everybody's also talking about how they can't get it. And I'm like, if everybody wants it and everybody is putting forth all this effort, you know, doing online dating, always on social media, kind of advertising who they are, why isn't anybody getting this closeness and connection that they're seeking? So as usual, when I keep asking the same question over and over and over again, the universe gives me an answer through experience. Um, So I had an experience myself where I ran into a wall when it came into vulnerability. Um, I think that's what's happening is a lot of us are dealing with a lot of hurt. Like we're dealing with a lot of past disappointment. We're dealing with Uh, maybe some quote-unquote dysfunctional family dynamics that we came up with. We're dealing with all these spaces that are unhealed. And when we say we want connection with other people, sometimes we're looking for those people to come in and fill in those gaps. We're looking for those people to be something for us that we need. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with building relationships in order to heal past wounds, in order to fill gaps in your life, in order to really fill up your life. We're, as human beings, I believe that we are designed for that. We come here with the gaps so that we can fill them. That's the whole point. The issue comes in when we inevitably deal with the disappointment that comes with connecting with other people. So we're out here looking for these gaps to be filled. We're out here looking for these wounds to be tended to. And we meet people and we connect with people and inevitably they disappoint us. That's the one thing that's for sure when it comes to connecting with anyone. And so we have these expectations and of course no other human being can meet all of our expectations. We have to admit that we can't meet another person's expectations either. No matter how much we love and care for another person, we cannot meet all of their emotional, physical, mental needs. And so a lot of us have dealt with situations where we were really hurt by someone, whether those wounds are old or fresh. And so we put up these walls and we're walking around with these walls up because we don't want to feel that pain again. 
and we keep walking around trying to get close to people not realizing that our wall hits them before we do and so like I said I came upon a situation where I was directly confronted with my own anxiety about connecting emotionally with the opposite sex and you know I'd met someone and things were you know progressing and I thought that I had done all the work I needed to do with regard to you know connection especially since I'm experiencing all these beautiful connections with other women but I get in this situation where I actually meet someone that I like and I'm terrified to be vulnerable and so I had a conversation with one of my good friends about the situation and you know, the relationship was new and this person was expressing a lot of, you know, feelings and hopes and wishes for the relationship. And I just could not move into vulnerability. And so I'm having this conversation with my friend about it. And she asked me these qualifying questions like, you know, has this person done anything um, to show you that they don't deserve your trust? Have they, you know, have they done anything that would tell you that you need to move with so much caution like moving with caution in the beginning of a relationship is normal and healthy but I was going beyond that like I literally felt anxiety behind opening up and she said something to me that was the inspiration for this whole episode she said the only way to know really if it's safe to connect with another person is to make yourself vulnerable And really, she just stopped me in my tracks. You know, she said, the only way to test whether or not this person is safe is to open up and see what happens. (laughs) And that hit me like a ton of bricks. You know, maybe some of you listening are like, duh. But for me, because I've dealt with so much pain in the past, that's not even something I considered. Like I had put up all these walls when it came to the opposite sex. And I was like, you know, I'm going to do this, do that. You know, have these list of things, these rules in place. And I never was in a situation where there were only green lights and the next step was to be vulnerable. (laughs) And so I sat with that and I made a decision. I made a decision to open myself up, to present an opportunity for this person to show that they were safe for me emotionally to see what would happen. And so... The moral of the story is not that, you know, we lived happily ever after I was vulnerable and this person proved to be safe. The truth is, you know, some other things came up and ultimately I decided not to move forward. But um, I learned some important lessons about what it takes to achieve closeness. And what I believe it takes to achieve closeness is fearlessness when it comes to vulnerability. Now, you can't just go from someone who's guarded to someone who just opens up because like I said it's inevitable that you get hurt it's always a gamble when you allow someone to see the deepest parts of you when you allow yourself to trust someone I mean honestly you can't ever trust another person you can give them the gift of trust but truly the the person that you're trusting is yourself and so what I want to give you guys in this episode are six things I think it was six. Let me check my notes. Yeah, six things that have to be in place in order for us to take the brave step into vulnerability so that we can develop honest connections with other people. The only way to do that is to open up and allow people to see you. The only way to to allow people to demonstrate to you that they can be a friend, that they can be trusted, is to allow them the opportunity to show you, which means you have to open yourself up. And so I realized that because I had done some inner work, I had completed these six steps I'm about to share with you guys, um, I was able to do that. And although things didn't turn out, you know, in the way that I had hoped, I was able to move away from that situation intact. You know, yes, I dealt with some disappointment, but it wasn't the debilitating pain that I was afraid of when I had the walls up. So these are the six things. The number one thing that you have to have solid if you're going to make yourself vulnerable to others is self-love. So I think I did another episode on this. I can't remember. If not, I'm going to do one. But I used to think that self-love and self-esteem were the same thing. But self-love is to truly understand your own value, to respect the good and the bad in you, to look at yourself as a whole with all of your imperfections and all of your awesome qualities and say, 
I am beautiful. I am perfection, always being perfected. So that basically means that you know your value. You know that you don't have to perform to get anyone's approval. You know that just as you are, you deserve your own love and the love of other people. And you know that despite the outcome of any relationship, that the way a person treats you has to do with who they are and not who you are. And so I had done all of that work. I know who I am. I really enjoy myself. I literally look in the mirror every morning. And at first I had to just tell myself, I love you, I love you, I love you, whether I believed it or not. But now I'm just excited about me. (laughs) I just really like me. And so I honestly believe that anybody who gets to experience me is getting a treat. And that's something that a lot of people are afraid to say or even afraid to feel. But it's so important if you want to develop healthy connections, connections that make you happy with other people. If you don't love you genuinely, like if you don't think you're a treat, then why would someone else? Why would you present yourself to someone else as um being a person who can create a synergistic, beautiful relationship. So number one is self-love. Number two is self-trust. This is something totally different. Um, A lot of times when we have these guards up, you know, that are preventing us from making connections, and this goes for female friendships too. I'm going to make a whole other episode about how all of this plays into um, women being friends. A lot of my friends my age complain that they don't have any women friends or they don't have anyone they can be themselves 100% with. But anyway, self-trust. So when we go through things and we may make a poor decision, we may ignore red flags, we may give more than we're comfortable with, we may allow situations that damage our self-esteem, we don't trust ourselves to make right decisions. And so when we run into a new situation and we're trying to make a decision about how much we're going to open up, all this fear moves in and we don't trust our own ability to judge a person's character, to um, make wise investments of time and resources. So we hold everything back. And so developing trust in yourself, trust in your ability to navigate your own life, trust in your ability to recover from any negative situation, any setback, any loss, any, you know, consequence related to a poor decision, building up your ability to overcome your emotions and think with logic and make decisions that benefit you is very important to have as a foundation before you make yourself vulnerable to anyone. Because if you have self-trust, you can kind of meter out vulnerability in a responsible way so you don't meet someone and the first day you know give them your social security number let them in your house you know you take your time but you must if you want closeness open up vulnerability one step at a time so that self-trust allows you to believe that you're making proper decisions when you decide how to invest your time um, and your emotions and your resources so that's number two self-trust Number three is self-sufficiency. This basically means that you have a life that you have created and that you enjoy. So you're not depending on someone else to kind of bring in the fun or bring in, you know, the excitement or bring in the love. You've already got all those things built up in your life. You're just allowing someone else in on the party, (laughs) So that way, you know, like if you're dating someone and, you know, this person could be absolutely amazing as far as what they can bring to your life, whether it's the excitement, like I mentioned, or even resources or money or, you know, they have access to things that you never had access to before. They're showing you things that you've never seen before. You have to have confidence in your own ability to create those experiences for yourself. That way, your decisions when it comes to how much to invest, how vulnerable to be, are not based on this desperation that, oh, this is the only source I have for happiness or joy or excitement or money or anything else. So you have to have that self-sufficiency. You have to know that how your life is constructed is not dependent upon anyone else but yourself. 
Number four is self-compassion. So we know that although we trust ourselves, especially if we've had a lot of life experiences where we have been knocked down and we got up, we know we can survive anything. We know we can move forward without fear. We have that self-trust. Sometimes if we make a wrong decision, we have no compassion for ourselves. We walk around with so much guilt, especially if, you know, as women, especially women with children, we're not just making decisions about our investments that affect us only. A lot of this stuff will affect our children. And so, you know, if we're moving into relationships with people and, you know, let's say we allow them to meet our children or influence our children or, you know, influence our lives in a certain way and things don't work out well, we, we look back and we realize we missed something or, um, you know, things just go bad for whatever reason. A lot of times we, we guilt ourselves so much and that makes us build these walls that we're building because we don't want to experience that guilt. We don't want to experience that shame um, that we made a poor choice. So self-compassion is so important. Forgiving yourself and forgiving yourself quickly when you make a wrong decision. If you enter into a relationship with someone and you make yourself vulnerable and they disappoint you or, you know, they, whatever, it, it goes bad, um, you are the first person you need to forgive, not even the other person. Forgive yourself first. <laughs> and then once you forgive yourself, once you, you know, forgive yourself for not being perfect, forgive yourself for not being all knowing, forgive yourself even for knowing something was off and moving forward anyway. I mean, truly forgive and love on yourself, then it's easy to forgive the other person. It's easy to move past whatever happens. Number five is self-understanding slash respect. And I put those two together because I think they're kind of the same thing. So if you take the time to really understand who you are, what your deepest desires are, that is a form of respect for the self. Think about it. If you, um, I don't know, I don't look at other people this way, but some people do. So say you have a, a boss that you're working for and this boss, you know, you want to impress this person. You have a lot of respect for them. You're going to try to understand what their preferences are. You're going to want to know what pleases them. You're going to want to understand how they react to different things. So if you have respect for yourself, you do the same thing. If you respect yourself, you understand your true desires, not what you think other people um, say, you know, other people believe that you should want. Even as mothers, you know, this is a big one because we have this image of the perfect mom that we think other people are holding and we don't like to discuss the truth of what it is to be a mom behind closed doors. And so we don't even respect our own wishes when it comes to raising our children or dealing with our families. So having understanding of the self and respecting that saying, this is what I really want. This is what I really think. This is what I really feel. This is what I really prefer. Knowing that and respecting that is a safeguard. So um, sometimes we like a person so much that we make these adjustments even if we know what our preferences really are, we say, well, maybe I can tolerate this or maybe I can bend here or maybe I could explore this. That's a term that those of us who are in self-denial will use. Um, and we make all these adjustments to accommodate the other person because, you know, especially at the beginning of a connection or a relationship where we really don't want to lose the connection. There's all these, you know, hormones in play that, make us feel like we just have to keep it going. And so we make all these small adjustments. We slowly disrespect ourselves by taking our needs and desires and what we really want and kind of shifting them so that we can accommodate someone else. There's nothing wrong with consciously making shifts. But before you make those shifts, you have to go deep inside and make sure that it's what you really want to do because no two people are going to have the same desires and preferences when it comes to relationship. So there's always going to be some adjustments, but if, if you find yourself constantly making adjustments, you're on the way to disappointment when it comes to connections because the other person doesn't even really know who you are. 
you're making all these adjustments, you're making all these concessions. Um, and at the end of the day, they think you're one way and they're all excited about this person you've presented when really your deepest desires are something totally different. So a deep self-respect by understanding the self is also something that you have to have before you decide to make yourself vulnerable. So that was number five. Number six is a deep respect for other people. This is a big one. So you have to understand that other people have a right to their preferences and their desires and that no one owes you anything. No one owes you love. No one owes you respect. That's something that you set boundaries to protect. You respect yourself, which makes you set boundaries that only give people one option, which is to respect you. (laughs) But no one owes you respect. No one even owes you the truth. Nobody owes you the truth. It is your responsibility to evaluate what someone is presenting and decide whether or not you accept it as truth. And so we could say, well, people shouldn't lie or people shouldn't mistreat or people shouldn't be selfish, always talking about what someone shouldn't do. When really, if you master number five, self-respect, then you won't often find that people who don't give you the truth or don't give you respect or don't give you affection or time or resources, don't meet your preferences, they don't get to stay. So that solves that problem. But respecting others means understanding that everybody is on their own path. Everybody has their own desires. Everybody has their own intentions. Everyone has their own methods to try to get what they want. And so if someone ends up not giving you what it is that you desire, you know, respecting them allows you to forgive them and move on. And so that's number six. So just a quick review. The six things you need before you can comfortably move into vulnerability with other people are number one, self-love, knowing your value. Number two, self-trust, trusting your ability to evaluate someone's character. Number three, self-sufficiency, having your own life, being in control of your own experience. Number four, self-compassion, having the ability to forgive yourself for your mistakes. Number five, self-understanding and respect, understanding your true desires and presenting those in an authentic way to other people. And number six, respecting other people, allowing people to move on their journey the way that they choose and protecting yourself by setting up boundaries for people who are moving in a way that doesn't vibe with the way that you're moving. Um, And I think this, having these six things, and you know, there's probably more, but these are the main ones that I can think of, will allow a lot more authenticity. When someone is standing on a strong foundation of self-love and trust and respect and self-sufficiency and compassion and understanding and respect for the self and respect for others, there's not such a need to have walls up. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't have boundaries. To me, having walls up is like having something that's impenetrable. It's like having an underground bunker where once you close the door, you can't come out (laughs) versus having, you know, a door that you can open or close depending on the circumstance. So having good boundaries is a natural outflow of these six principles or or foundations, Um, but having walls keeps you from truly connecting with other people. Um, I think it's so important these days, especially because we can have this false sense of connection through social media and through all these, you know, coffee room conversations where we keep things very high level. Um, We can have the illusion of connection, but feel very, very lonely And I think it's important for us to build up the self and to remember the importance of connection because now we're on this whole independence thing. But truly, people are yearning for true connection. Um, Just remembering that we do need each other and that it's not wrong to want to let people in and even want to let people help you heal your wounds. That's not wrong. That's not a, you know, an unhealthy desire. But walking in fear, 
putting up walls, blaming other people when things don't go your way, becoming bitter. All those things are self-destructive. And I hope that, you know, breaking these things down in an organized way kind of helps those out there looking for more connection move into that space. So that's all I have for you guys for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me your feedback. The best way to get to me now is on my Facebook page, highfrequencywoman.com. No, sorry. Um, High Frequency Woman on Facebook. So I'm going to be relaunching the highfrequencywoman.com website as well. Um, You can also find me now at remoteworkinggirl.com. Um, I'm providing consulting services and helping people kind of design their work-life balance plans. Um, Mainly, I focus on helping people who already have a job convert that job into a remote opportunity. So thank you guys so much for listening, and I will talk with you next time. Thanks so much for listening in. If you like or even love what you're hearing, the best way to make sure this information reaches other women looking to experience more joy is to review and subscribe. If the things you've heard have made any impact in your life at all, leave a quick note saying what you love about the show. It could be your act of gratitude for the day, and it's your way of saying thank you for all the insight provided every week. Remember to check us out for more life design tools, tips, and tricks at highfrequencywoman.com. Thank you.